Attending an NFL game is a grand experience. It's also a huge money-making enterprise. The NFL's revenue in 2014 was over $9 billion. Aaron Rodgers, the Green Bay Packers quarterback, made $22 million that same season. Most of the cheerleaders, however, were lucky to earn minimum wage. From the time you walk into that stadium, you, you give your ticket to a ticket taker, um, you buy a beer, some peanuts maybe, somebody comes up and cleans up after you. There's players on the field, there's coaches, there's trainers. Every single person in that experience is paid. Most of them, because of the fact that these are public facilities in large cities, are paid beyond a minimum wage. In fact, most of them are unionized and, uh, and, and are paid a living wage. The only exception to this are the cheerleaders on the field. One of those cheerleaders was Caitlin Yates, who spent five years as an Oakland Raiders Raiderette. The general assumption before all of this came, um, came about was that we made as much as the football players. That was the general assumption, it, or at least that it was a very high paying job. And people were very surprised to hear that we did make minimum wage and even more surprised to hear you know, that we were making well below it and not being treated like employees. Yates says that she earned less than $5 an hour if all of her work from games to practices to promotional appearances is included. Assemblywoman Lorena Gonzalez has introduced legislation to protect the rights of cheerleaders as workers. In a legislative committee hearing for Assembly Bill 202, Gonzalez expressed the notion expressed by some that women like Caitlin Yates should feel lucky just to be on the field as an NFL cheerleader. When you look, obviously, at a, at a case of a young woman, like so many of us who grew up just dreaming to be a cheerleader and then told that it's enough that you get the opportunity to come out and cheer that you should not demand what every other worker in California gets, and that's dignity and respect under California state laws. AB 202 will clarify in state law that a professional cheerleader is provided the legal rights and benefits of an employee. I hope that my legislation ensures that if you're a pro cheerleader in California, whether you're working for the NFL or the NBA, that you're treated with um, the protections of an eight-hour workday. If not, that you get overtime, that you get at least a minimum wage or a living wage if you live in one of those cities that provide for a higher minimum wage, that you get paid sick days and workers' compensation, and that you just have the basic protections that any other employee has in California. The teams control our outfits, makeup, hair. Routine, Yates acknowledges that becoming a Raiderette was a dream come true. I worked hard to be there, and I trained from when I was, you know, three years old in ballet all the way up until I, I made the team, and it was a very difficult experience to make the team. And there's lots of other professions out there that you have to train hard to get. A million people would kill to have that job, but they get paid well for it, and we don't. I think there's not a, a, a little kid or a grown man who would tell you if they had the opportunity to go play baseball they'd be lucky to be there they take that opportunity that doesn't mean we don't pay baseball players if if you or i were in the movies we'd say it's a great opportunity we're lucky to be here but we pay movie stars so yes it's a dream it's a lot of little girls dreams to grow up and be a, a professional cheerleader but that doesn't mean that they shouldn't be compensated for their true worth um, for the value that they add to the organization for the fact that they are in fact workers this report was produced by the Speaker's Office of Member Services.